What's up guys, welcome back to another GG video and today I'll be doing a quick unboxing on the Corsair XH405i RGB water cooling kit. So basically Corsair sent this to me to take a look, uh, do a video for you guys on what you get in this system, mainly because I do a lot of custom loop builds, that's pretty much all I do. So they wanna know my feedback, uh, things like all the components that are used and so on. I probably won't be doing a build with this hardware exactly, it'll be more uh, later on, I'm doing a build in one of their Corsair cases in a full white theme. So we'll be using some of their other components. Uh, this kit doesn't come with their, uh, like the blocks with the screen, the pump res combo with the screen. So we'll be using different hardware and so on. So let me know if you do want me to do a build only using this gear to see how easy, to see how hard it is. Because something straight away, I think it might be a bit of a struggle because normally when I see kits like this, I think this is more for uh, introductory for beginners uh, who want to go into custom water cooling and with a kit like this for example I'll just get straight to the point one thing I noticed is you get two uh, right angle fittings just two so I can see straight away you're going to be doing a lot of bends uh, with only the two so for being a beginner's kit only having two is kind of not very many you're going to need to do a lot of bends and even in most of my builds i normally keep most of my hard tubing bends down to just one it makes it a lot easier and also sometimes a lot neater as well but yeah let me know if you do want me to do like a part two where i just use this gear to see how well it went so pretty much going to go through uh through everything in here uh, so this kit is quite new uh there have been kits before but the main or the updated features in this kit is it does come with the uh, IQ link. So you do get the, um, I'll get this right, it comes with the system hub and the splitter. So it comes with everything you need to, of course, run their fans, their full ecosystem and things like that. So straight away, you get the XR5 360 uh, radiator. This is a slim, probably they've gone with the slim for more so on the case support. Uh, a lot of cases will struggle to go with thicker radiators, uh, not just their cases, although of course they probably would like you to use their cases. Uh, they will fit in better with the ecosystem for the RGB, but the slim will support uh, a lot of cases out there. And the other reason is for a CPU only loop. I didn't mention that this will only do your CPU loop because mainly when it comes to a CPU loop, you'll get away with any CPU support, any socket support, unless you're going with workstation and so on. But for consumer side, you'll get away with this block, will cover everything you need. Whereas if they throw in a GPU block, how do they know whether which brand it's for, which series it's for? Because all blocks are mostly going to be different. So this is CPU only, and this radiator will be fine for most CPUs out there. Uh, you got your fans there, so they've thrown in their highest end QX120. So these are their top line uh, fans they have. Then we have, looks like some stickers. That's your tubing. So this is a full 14 uh, millimeter outer diameter kit for the tubing. So we'll just get all the boxes out and then I'll probably just cut to having all the items out and um, on the table because you probably don't want to see me open up all of these boxes. So pretty much you can buy all of these separately, but this kit is just done to simplify things. People getting into water cooling, uh, it's all there, ready to go. There is even the last thing is the fill bottle there. So now I have opened everything up. That actually took quite a while, so I'm glad I didn't do that on camera. So as I mentioned earlier, the radiator there, just a slim 360, and this is a Hardware Labs OEM, so that is going to be a good performing radiator there. The tubing, they give you one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are half a meter and these are acrylic. So that should be enough. But once again, um, if it is your first time, you can always purchase more tubing. It is relatively cheap. And you can just mess around with different bends and so on. And I'll talk about the bending kit they give you a little bit later on. Moving to some of the other main components in the system. So this is the pump res combo. It's actually been a while since I've used Corsair gear. I'd say it's probably been at least five, six years, and that was before they even had water cooling gear at all. I think back when I used it, they didn't really do fans. They just started fans. So this is quite a step up from what I um, am used to using, especially when it was last when I was using Corsair. So this is their pump res combo. This is the HXD5. 
So one thing that Corsair have done really well recently is with the IQ system, you just need one cable to link all of their components. So this is the connector on the back, so you don't need to power the pump via SATA power, Molex power, and then you don't need to control the PWM, and then you don't need a separate, uh, separate cable for the IGB. So this one connector will plug in, and then this will go back to the, obviously, if you're just running one device, you don't need to use this splitter, but with the IQ link, link hub, you will need to run this, which will just split, because we've got one device, two device, and then the fans. And then if you have any more devices, you need to use their splitter. So make sure you need uh, one of those. If you are thinking about going Corsair and you don't go with this kit, you need a splitter and each device will take up one connection. Uh, there are some other items like their fans have an in and an out. So if you're running multiple banks of their fans, that's fine. It doesn't consume one port, but on this, there's only one port. So that will take up one device on the hub and same with the uh, CPU block as well just has one port on it. But yeah, this looks pretty neat. And also another thing with a lot of the Corsair uh, water cooling gear is they have uh, temperature sensors built in. So there's a temp sensor in here. There's a temp sensor in the CPU block. There's also a temp sensor. I'll see if I can get a shot. A temp sensor on every one of these fans. It's right in there. So when you fire up this software, you have it all connected in the ecosystem. You can monitor the temps of uh, each fan. I'm not sure if that's something uh, that would interest a lot of people. I've done a build before where I wanted to know the intake temp of the fans, which are at the bottom of the case, and then the exhaust temperature of the fans at the top. That's kind of handy to know, to see the temp uh, variance between your intake and then your exhaust. Um, having it on each fan, obviously the three intake fans at the bottom, uh, temperatures should be relatively the same, and same with the three exhausts at the top. The three should be the same, but I guess they couldn't really just do it one on the bank of the fans. The only way that they could do it was a temp sensor on each of the fans. So these are their QX fans, very good fans. IGB is really nice on those and that'll connect to their ecosystem as well. So the CPU block is the XC7 Elite. Now they do have other ones with LCD screens on and that I guess this kit they tried to keep it as uh, cost effective as possible because they do have a pump rest combo that has the lcd screen on it as well i guess if you went with that it would be uh pushing the price up a bit because this kit does retail for 6.99 so basically 700 us dollars and this is the stealth gray let me know your thoughts on this color it's i would think it's quite nice it's got black around the sides and then it's got what they call the stealth gray and then same with the cpu block and it does come in a full white version as well. So that'll give you the white rad, the white fans, and then the white for the pump rest combo, and then white for the CPU block. Now, I've mentioned the CPU block has the temp sensor in as well. So you're gonna have a temp sensor in the pump rest combo, and then the temp sensor in the CPU block. You don't really need more than one uh, temp sensor in your loop, because once your uh, water gets to a certain temp, it'll stay the same uh, throughout the whole loop. But in saying that, they have to put it in each device, as in if you just pick up the CPU block and go with like a, a different brand pump rest combo, they have to have it in each of their device in case you're only going to use one item of their device. But in this case, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five temp sensors in this system. Two will actually be in the loop, and then these three will be just air sensors for the air going in. Now. Moving on to the fittings, which I mentioned earlier. So you actually get eight uh, compression fittings, 14 mil. This is 14 mil acrylic tubing. So these are the stand black. And then with the white, you will get the white fittings. So you get eight of these, which is going to be enough for a CPU loop. You won't need any more than eight. But my only concern is with the angled fittings is you only get two. Now, I can't remember the last time I did a build where I just needed two 90 degree fittings. So in the diagrams on the Corsair product spec for this kit, for their builds, they did have a lot of funky bends. Now, if you're a beginner picking up this loop, uh, it's the first time you've used like uh, bending guides and the silicon insert. It's going to be very hard to do say three or four bends in one bit of tube. So you'll need to do a bend out of say the CPU block a bend a little bit further on and then a bend down the bottom into a radiator so personally i think they should maybe 
give you more of the 90s. Now, I know Corsair don't do extensions, so that's gonna be, be a little bit tricky. They don't do extensions, but they do do, um, I'm actually not sure if they do 45 uh, degree either, but if they do do 45s, it'll be sweet if they could throw those in, but definitely some more 90 degree fittings. And maybe there's an option where they could drop the fans down to like their RX, which are slightly more affordable than these fans. They could drop down to the RX fans then they could throw in some more um, more fitting options so you can play around with it rather than relying uh, your loop layout on all of your bends as well. And these, just being half a meter is fine, but they're not the longest if you wanna do some crazy bends and experiment with them and so on. Um, you get some coolant. This is just their standard XL8 coolant. It's just clear and it's probably got the right inhibitors you need to uh, stop any buildup in your loop. Another thing I did like with this pump race combo is I was actually surprised you get all of these different mounts for you to play with. Now you don't have to mount these exactly like they have in their um, product shots for this build. I think they have it mounted on like the back side with one of these. It was probably this one. This would mount like this and then it would go like that or it may even mount here. Yeah, it would probably mount like actually, it would probably mount like that because that's got the um, countersunk holes like that. So mount like that, and then you mount this on the back of, I would say, this one, which would go on a fan on your side, and that's how it would mount. So that'll do the 120, and then it looks like this bracket will do the 140. So they give you options for, if you're going with 120 and 140 mil fans, obviously this kit is 120, but obviously this is a set product they put in this kit. So it does come with the standard 120 and 140 brackets as if you're buying this for just externally for a system instead of in this kit. So it's nice they do that. And moving on to the bending kit. I actually haven't looked at this yet. So all right, we have a little, I would call this like a little hacksaw, um, standard hacksaw there. These here are some bending guides. So this little bending tool is quite interesting. I haven't actually seen any brands do this. Normally they just give you those metal mandrels where they give you like a 45, a 90 and so on. And you have to either mount that on the board. But this one is you slide your tubing in like, not that one, you slide your tubing in like this and it's got measurement guides. So say you wanna come out of this block, uh, say 40 mil before you bend, it's already got 30 already in depth and then it's got plus or minus 10 so you go 10, 10, 10, 10, if you wanna go 10, 20, 30 more. And then you put this little stopper in like that, and then you will just bend this around. So I'm assuming that'll be like 30, uh, 45. This would be like a 90 at this point, and then this would continue going around. So that's actually quite interesting. I actually haven't seen any other brands do that. I don't know how well it uh, works. If I end up doing a build with this whole kit, I will definitely test this to see if it is either like a complete waste of time, it doesn't work, or it actually does help you uh, with your uh, bends. And this is obviously just to hold your tubing. To cut it, you would slide it in there. Uh, this looks like it goes up against the tab a table edge. Slide your tubing in, hold it in, and then you can use this to cut it, which will be actually uh, pretty fine. I actually used one of these saws for many, many years. It was only, I would say the last two years, I actually bought a electronic little miter saw that just drops down and cuts it but i did use a hand saw for a very long time so anyone out there that does say one or two builds a year these will definitely be enough for what you need and then you have this this is very uh, important this is the reamer so obviously with fittings like this there is an o-ring on the inside so at the moment this is actually quite sharp it's not too sharp because it looks like it's been slightly chamfered from the factory. Oh, this one here is a little bit sharper. So what you do is, this is probably quite loud. Just a few turns in there. Then we just pop the collar over. And this is the collar O-ring. And this just pops inside like so. It is hard when it's not actually screwed onto anything when it's just a fitting, and then you slide that down, and then 
you lock it in place like so. So that's basically it. Just got to always make sure you just uh, ring the outside of it. You can do the inside a little bit, but that's not really as important as the outside because even though it's only plastic acrylic, it can still cut O-rings if you're not careful. So that's one thing you must do. And I think that's mainly it. You also get a squeeze bottle as well. One tip with these squeeze bottles, they aren't really sealed too well. Um, just checking. These ones normally have to stay vertically and you squeeze the coolant. I've got squeeze bottles that are sealed, so you can turn them upside down, do whatever you want. These ones you normally keep upright. So if you're filling a pump res combo, you keep it up like this and you just squeeze it in like so. And that's how you fill your loop. But this unit here, it looks like it would be pretty easy to fill, but I think that is it. I didn't want this video to go for too long, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on this kit. Let me know if you think the fitting situation, if you think there should be a few more fittings, and also let me know if you want me to do a build in one of their cases with only using this equipment. So only using these two fittings, the other fittings supplied, and this radiator as well. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Corsair for sending this out to check out, and we'll see you in the next one.